Hello everyone and thanks for watching the Fast Track Tutorials YouTube channel. In this quick tutorial I will go over a technique that I like to call making low poly objects feel high poly without baking, but the official names are weighted normals, so face weighted normals, or some people call them vertex normals. Actually, within the industry they have a bunch of names, but they all do the same thing. Now I will just go over a very basic explanation. I will go over on how to do it in 3ds Max and then how to do it inside of Blender. Um, Maya works a little bit different, so for that I would recommend just going to Google and trying it out. Also, as I said, so because it's a basic explanation, uh, I would recommend if you want to have more technical knowledge to just go to Google, type in what are weighted normals, face weighted normals, and you often get to like a poly count wiki where you will go more in depth and also how to do it with different tools in different programs. Although some of this, I must admit, is a little bit outdated. Um, also, another thing is I am using 3ds Max 2019. In 3ds Max 2019, the tool is not yet built in, so you need to download a plugin. However, if you have 3ds Max, if it wants to load, there we go. So inside of 3ds Max 2021, you will already have the tool built in. So um, it, the tool basically does the same thing. So I would recommend if you have like the uh, very, very latest 3ds Max, that you just have a read through this, just the weighted normals modifier. It's under um, modifiers, object space modifiers, and there you can find it. Okay, so the way that we are going to do this inside of 3ds Max is I want to go ahead and I want to download a plugin. Now, so if you type in 3ds Max weighted normals plugin, there are a few of them. Um, the second and third link you can try out. So you have this one, the improved face weighted normals. And I think this is the one that we will most likely try out because it has a free version. And you have this one, which um, is another weighted normals script that I personally have not used, but um, it looks like it does the exact same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to download that and drag it in here. So you can simply drag in your download and it will open up this little script. But as I said before, this isn't a beginner tutorial. This is just to show you a technique. Okay, so very simplified explanation that uh, I like to give. Right now, if I create a box, let's just create a very simple box. One second, and I'll make it like 20 by 20 by 20. So with this box, as you can see, um, it has faces. Every face has a direction. This is called the normal direction. So this face is pointing upwards. This face is pointing left, etc. You can also display this by going to your modifiers and going to edit normals. And this is why I use 3ds Max, because it is easier for me to explain it in 3ds Max first and then show it in Blender. So as you can see, every face has its own normal direction. Now, what that does is, because these faces are all connected, if I would go ahead and I would add a smoothing modifier, or you just set your smoothing basically to 1, you can see that you will get a lot of artifacts. However, if we would bevel this, what we can do, so if we convert this to an edit poly, and we would bevel this. So for weighted normals, you often do need to bevel things. So I'm just going to add a chamfer and add a quick bevel. What will happen is that there will still be normals on this face, over here, and there will still be normals on this face, but this, these faces now also have normals. Because this is pointing upwards, and this is pointing left, what will happen is this bevel will create like a buffer for the smoothening. And that's where weighted normals comes in. So right now, if I select everything and I just go down here and I set my smoothening to one, you can always see that it looks a little bit better because you can see that in between here, it feels a bit better. However, these faces, they are still not pointing upwards. As soon as you add the bevel, they no longer point upwards. They point uh, often a little bit to the side. You can see this and I will first show you how to do this manually and then with the tool. So you can see this, if we add an edit normals, you can see here that see they are slightly warped. So all this script does is it basically picks your normals over here. So it picks the normals of the flat faces, which are an angle of 90 degrees. And it moves those exactly up like this so that they are pointing upwards. And it does that for every face. So I will do it for two faces uh, to show you. So over here, it would move this one left. And now what happens, because you are moving your normals um, in the direction of the face and you're making them very sharp, it means that this face will become a very harsh face, even though we have full smoothening on it. However, because our bevel does not look, or our bevel does not have that um, same correction, 
it will still look smooth, which means that it will create a buffer. And that will create the effect that you go from flat to smooth to flat. And that is basically the general idea of it. You can use this for everything. It's mostly used uh, for large models, for uh, constructual models, buildings, everything like that. Um, personally, I use it a lot. Uh, the only time I don't really use it is if I have a really high detail model that I just need to bake down from high poly to low poly. So basically you pay for a little bit extra geometry expense, but in turn you get a very nice quality. And because you're not baking, you actually save on texture space. And nowadays with especially um, PC and console games, what happens is that you are way more focused on the texture resolutions and the amount of textures that you have on your level. And geometry is getting less of like a problem with modern day technology. So that's why we can like spend a bit of extra geometry. Now, if I delete this, and this time I use the tool, press generate, you can see here, it just did that for every single face which makes it look very nice and high poly. You can then convert it. Now I will show you a few more techniques. So first of all, uh, this, this is just a cube, but you can simply, here, if I just do this, extrude this in. And so it doesn't really matter what your mesh is. As long as you have a harsh corner, you want to go ahead and you want to give it a bevel or a chamfer, whatever you want to call it, depending on the program you use. So this, you can just give it like a little chamfer. Don't go too small. You want to do this for objects that if they are really, really tiny, I'm talking like only a few centimeters big, it's often not worth the extra expense. And the reason for this is because, yeah, you, unless your camera is getting very, very close to it, you simply will not notice it. So now I will show you a technique inside Blender where we added weighted normals, then we are editing our mesh, but now you can see that our mesh isn't really working well. This is because we need to reset the weight normals. We can do this very easily simply by adding an SGL check modifier. And that will simply reset your normals. And then you can just press generate again. And if I turn off edge and faces, there you go. So that works again. And just like that, you can just keep going and going um, for much more complicated models. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an SGL check. And I will show you one last technique. And that is if you want to make like one of these faces harsh. So for example, let's say that for some reason um, you are making a modular asset and this face needs to stay perfectly, like it doesn't have a bevel. So I don't know. So here, it's, uh, I'll turn, let me turn on edge faces. Here we go. So it doesn't have a bevel, which means that it would give us errors. But uh, the reason that you might not have a bevel is because you need to duplicate this over and over again from a modular workflow. Very easy. You start with setting everything to smoothing group 1. And then you simply select on this one. And just turn off smoothing group 1. Now you can see that this face is harsh. And the tool, when you generate it, it will simply ignore that. Um, of course, I broke it because I accidentally merged it together here. So what you technically would do is uh, you would keep this bevel running up until this point, And then you would do that. Here we go. I just quickly did it for you. So this is what you would do in order to keep the bevel correct. And that it works. So that is a very quick explanation on uh, how to use the basics of the weight normals. And now just to very quickly show you inside of Blender. If we go here, it is very simple. Blender has a built-in. So you just simply grab a cube. You go ahead and you, um, I don't know, like insert it, shift e, something like this. So it's a bit the same cube. I'm going to give all my edges a bevel just by pressing Ctrl B. Quick bevel. And now what you want to do for this one, it's slightly different. Uh, if you go to object mode, you first of all want to press the little object data properties, which is the green triangle. And then you want to go to normals and turn on auto smooth. After that, if you go to modifiers, art modifiers, weighted normal, and there you go. And I tend to set my weight to 100. It will make my uh, top faces a little bit sharper. But here, same basic concept. And you can create the same things like that. And now one last thing to show you. Um, I'm just going to go to my portfolio and let's just see if there are some things where I used weight normals to show you. Uh, let's see. So over here. So the farmhouse that I created. All these planks over here, you can see they all have weight normals on them. So you can see that they have like the nice little bevel. So they look quite smooth. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, let's go for like some division stuff. Here, see, these are weighted normals. That's not baked. Those are all weighted normals on here. 
Uh, these ones are a bit more complicated. Over here, this entire structure just has bevels around it and all has weight normals. These pieces also all have weighted normals. So you can see that how little we actually bake down because it takes so much texture space um, to bake it down. Here also weighted normals. These ones not. That's other stuff. Um, here, oh no wait, this is baked down. This stuff is baked down because it was a bit more complicated. But this building, you can see here the smooth edges. Can I like zoom in? Yeah, you can see here like all these nice smooth edges and everything. Those are not harsh edges. Those are all weighted normals. So I hope that you can see the power of weighted normals. I personally think it is a must have if you want to become a professional 3D artist um, to know how to do it. So you now know how to do it. I would recommend going in a little bit more research. There are many tutorials like on flip normals or on ArtStation, including many tutorials that I personally created at, under the name Emil Sligers and not so much under the name Fast Track Tutorials um, that you can look up and you can learn a lot from. So I hope this was useful and I hope to see you next time.